Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley and we're diving back into this interview by the TSA. This is the Six Army, just to let you know again. Link that below in the description so you can check out the full article. And they interview Al Bickham and also Andy Hall. Andy Hall works for uh, Creative Assembly now. He used to be at Games Workshop writing lore. I think he was doing that for 10 to 15 years and now he's the lead writer for this title. What you can see here is going to be part of a larger old world map that was sort of released as a part of a Humble Bundle charity run. Stay tuned for that. I'm a little bit um, concerned about releasing the full thing here, so I'm just going to show you little snippets, but uh, expect a full analysis in the future. Anyways, we're going to be talking primarily about the Empire here. So the Empire, this is kind of the traditional boundaries of the Empire. And you might think, holy crap, that is overpowered to start with that large of an empire. I mean, there are still little areas of concern. Look at the northwest, the wastelands. Probably you have to deal with border threats there. There are the mountains to the north. Maybe those have goblins. And then Bretonia to the uh, to the west. Um, and then you have issues with the vampire counts to the southeast. But still, this would be super overpowered. But here, it's revealed that as the empire, you start small, which is good. It's not at all like the Western Roman Empire situation where you have to, you know, you would hold the whole empire as it falls apart. No, you're starting small as Reichland. And then the rest of the empire territories are broken up into various elector counts, and you have to unite those. And that plays into the uh, the role that you can put a lord in, if you'll recall. You can put lords as various um, roles, and one of those roles was going to be a protagonist who's in charge of dealing with sort of internal politics. So that's cool. I'm going to read you off a quote. It really plays into that, because the way the empire works in the IP is they're not one happy nation by any means. It's a massive, sprawling empire, and most of the time, the emperor himself is just a far-off name, a status symbol, and all the other elect accounts are jumping on each other's backs to get ahead. They're playing the Game of Thrones. So here, that is super cool. I really like that they're, that they're sticking to the principle of starting small and expanding. That always makes for the best gameplay. Because here you'll you'll start as Reichland, and you'll have all these squabblings. Perhaps you'll start with poor diplomatic relations with Midenland, and then you have to fight for small little territories, very small squabbling. And then, as was announced, you'll have you know if you choose Karl Franz, he'll have a certain quest chain that he has to go through that will probably tell you you know do errands for Midenland, bring them into the fold, and perhaps you'll move on to Sterline. And slowly but surely you'll uh, you'll accrue a larger empire, and then finally you settle in on this big empire. But it's going to be an uphill fight, which is awesome. I like the fact that you start all the way to the west, because not only do you have to deal with perhaps tenuous situations with what's happening with Bretonia to your west, maybe you want to appease them, but also the empire itself. The empire itself, I'm glad that it's disunited, because look on the southeast, you have eastern, eastern Sylvania and western Sylvania. I'm guessing those are going to be an empire control, but they're going to border the vampire counts, who presumably are going to pick on these weak territories. And meanwhile, if you're the human player in Reichland, there's nothing you can do about that in the early game, which is really good, because the vampire counts are probably going to start small, and it's going to be up to them to be opportunistic to, you know, chew at the empire, which is broken up right now, which I think is going to be so cool if you're playing either from the vampire counts standpoint or the empire standpoint. So that's it for covering those territories. And then they go ahead and talk a little bit about diplomacy in the sense of other nations. And they said, it's exactly the same for the Greenskins as well. You can unite the tribes through diplomacy. Diplomacy isn't just between races, but it's also between factions as well. So that's just a reminder that, of course, you have these main races, you know, the four main races. But within those, you break it down, chop it down into a bunch of different um, entities that can, you know, uh, fight against each other. So, interesting to hear that the Greenskins have some form of internal diplomacy to bring the wog together, and it's not just bashing skulls. Anyways, that's going to be my take on it. Like I said, go ahead and check the description below for the full article, read into that. And also, stay tuned, I'll be bringing you videos, maybe, on that whole Humble Bundle um, campaign map. See you on the next one.